and welcome to Belmont Journal, Belmont's new show and community update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today with us, we have the chief of the Belmont Fire Department, Chief David Di Stefano. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Maribel. It's, it's great to be here. I appreciate it. So, uh, Chief, this weekend we had a big storm. Can you share any incident and emergencies that you helped? Sure. Yeah. During the storm, uh, we did respond to a number of incidents. Uh, in fact, during the height of the storm, uh, we had several incidents simultaneously. Uh, we had a small fire that we responded to, uh, and there were several medical incidents uh, that occurred at the same time, uh, which were handled mostly by our, our mutual aid partners uh, in using their resources. Uh, we did have some extra staffing working for the storm, uh, and that worked out to our advantage in being able to respond to this fire very rapidly uh, and arriving very quickly with enough resources to handle the situation um, uh, in a very efficient manner. So uh, that was something that really worked to our advantage. We happened to have a unit that was uh, literally right around the corner when the call came in, and uh, that unit arrived on scene uh, within moments of receiving the call. So it worked out very well. Uh, damage was held to a, a very minimal amount of damage and um, there were no injuries. Uh, the other incidents that we handled during the storm uh, were more or less uh, typical incidents that could occur on any other day. Uh, just uh, having them uh, during that severe weather just kind of exacerbated the situation with our response and uh, getting through the snow to handle those type of calls. But uh, we, were, we were fortunate in that the snow was light. Uh, it was a Saturday. Um, a lot of people did heed the warnings to stay home uh, and we made it through okay. Great. And there's also an initiative called Adopt a Hydrant. Can you please share our community about it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're, we're very, very appreciative of folks that uh, do take advantage of this and and go out and uh, shovel out uh, the hydrant that's closest to their home. We, we very, very much appreciate that. <clears throat> The day after the storm Sunday, uh, we had uh, every member that was working uh, was out shoveling hydrants uh, for probably about five or six hours, perhaps even a little more. Uh, and, and as you know, it was extremely cold on Sunday. So they were out for a, a good long time in the cold uh, shoveling out hydrants. If we can get any assistance at all with this, it's greatly appreciated because, you know, with 11 people working, uh, we can't get all the hydrants done immediately. Uh, and certainly a fire can happen at any time. So uh, it really is helpful to us to have the hydrant shoveled out uh, and just as importantly, helpful to the people in the neighborhood because uh, that's our water supply. That hydrant that's closest to your house uh, is going to be our water supply to put out uh, a potential fire at your house. So we need to really all work together to get, uh, get that done. So if you could possibly get out there uh, after it stops snowing, as long as it's safe to do so, and uh, give us a three foot by three foot uh, clear area around the hydrant. We greatly appreciate that. We'll come by, we'll see it, and uh, we'll be very happy about that. And uh, you know, if it's not done, if you don't have an opportunity to do it, we'll certainly get to it. We may not get to it uh, immediately that first day, but uh, you know, we'll get to it as soon as we can. And talking about winter, there has been a series of uh, ice rescues made in the area. Can you please share uh, what has been about and the message you have for our community? Sure. Um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, neighboring communities have had a number of incidents. In fact, I believe there were three or four incidents just in the course of one Sunday a couple of weeks ago uh, with uh, people and or animals uh, falling through the ice and nearby bodies of water. So we uh, would just like to remind people that the ice uh, or the water uh, uh, bodies of water in your area may not be safe to, to walk on or play on or skate on. Uh, you know, we have had some cold weather uh, and certainly people might think that the ice is safe and in certain areas of a body of water, the ice may be thick. Uh, in other parts of that same body of water, the ice may be very, very thin and it's difficult to determine that. Uh, so we would really ask that people stay off the ice, keep your pets off the ice. Uh, we don't want folks going out after pets onto the ice. Uh, if that does occur, give us a call. We'll, we'll go out there and make a rescue using the uh, the appropriate equipment. But we would prefer not to put uh, our people in harm's way and certainly not to put um, residents in harm's way uh, going out onto ice that may not be safe. Um, there is a website that's available, uh, which I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll share with folks later in the broadcast uh, that they can check with uh, uh, Commonwealth um, uh, Mass um, DEP, um, 
website regarding uh, ice safety and uh, they can check out the local bodies of water and see if they are safely frozen for uh, recreation. Great, we will have the website in the banner of the screen to, um, to do that. And also uh, the group of firefighters receive a training for um, water res rescue operations. Can you share about that? Right, you know, uh, actually, this, this is, a, I think, a great opportunity to point out to everyone watching uh, that we'd really love if you followed us on social media. Uh, we're uh, active on basically all the popular social media platforms, and this was one of the items that we shared uh, maybe a week or two ago. We, uh, we did uh, take advantage of the pool at the high school uh, to conduct some water rescue training uh, using our exposure suits, and we have a couple of photographs of our firefighters doing that at the pool. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to use the pool. Great training, re great training resource for us, and a great opportunity to do that. Um, so we, we train on on this type of thing uh, at least a couple of times a year. We try and do something in the winter. We try and do something in the, the warmer weather. Um, but this was a, a water rescue training using our exposure suits. And actually, uh, we have some additional training coming up in February. We'd like to uh, do some ice rescue training. So we should be out on the ice in February doing some um, person through the ice type of uh, scenarios uh, for rescue training. And we'll be sure to document that. We'll let you know uh, when we're doing that. And uh, we'll certainly post some updates on that. But it's, it's important for us to, to stay on top of those type of topics. Uh, and certainly it's pertinent to, uh, to the weather. Also, the department was awarded with a grant for a firefighter safety equipment. How will this help the department? Uh, that's a great question, and that, that money is going to be a great help to us. So uh, in January, we were awarded uh, $18,999, just about $19,000, uh, by the Department of Fire Services uh, to purchase equipment to assist uh, in resident and firefighter safety. So this is a, a great opportunity to get some money uh, infused into the department to purchase some equipment that we probably wouldn't be able to buy otherwise, or if we did, it would be very impactful of our budget. So uh, this is um, a, a great opportunity to kind of beef up some of our response capabilities and we're using it to purchase some things that are um, helpful universally uh, that will help firefighters that are in trouble, that will help uh, residents that are in trouble. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, each of those items. So we, we've purchased a, a new forcible entry tool. Uh, we have a couple of these tools in the department already, and this will certainly add to our inventory of equipment uh, that allows us to more rapidly access uh, buildings and enforce uh, doors in apartment type buildings and in um, commercial and residential type buildings. It allows us to um, make forcible entry of these doors very efficiently. Um, and will certainly speed up the process of us getting in to uh, make rescues and affect fire suppression efforts. So we're really happy to have that. Uh, we also uh, just received uh, what is called a fast board. And uh, this type of device actually facilitates the movement of either civilians or firefighters who may be trapped either in a fire or require extrication in some other type of rescue scenario. It, it's something that we can strap on to folks uh, whether civilian or firefighter, and uh, facilitate their movement out of a dangerous area. So it's, it's just something that makes the, that, that removal or that rescue process just much more efficient and much safer for everybody involved. So it's great to have that. We purchased one with our, out of our operating budget uh, a number of months ago. Uh, we were only able to purchase one at that point. This gives us the additional capability. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one of these devices uh, on each side of town uh, in each station. So we can uh, have that capability rapidly accessible all the time. Uh, we're also uh, purchasing some new rescue harnesses. Uh, we had rescue harnesses in the department that uh, aged out. Uh, after a certain number of years, uh, they are no longer able to be certified for use in life safety applications. So those older harnesses aged out. Uh, we, um, we had to put those out of service. We were not able to immediately purchase new ones. Uh, this grant um, enables us to do that, uh, and it comes in a great time because we have some uh, technical rescue and confined space rescue training that's going to be coming up in the spring. So we'll have brand new harnesses uh, to learn uh, and brush up on those skills with uh, in the spring. So great timing for that. Uh, the other uh, couple of items we received are uh, we've had vehicle stabilization struts uh, in our inventory of equipment for quite some time in the department. They're great devices. Uh, they can be used uh, in, in several different rescue platforms. What we find ourselves using them uh, most often as uh, is devices to stable rolled over vehicles or vehicles that are, are, are not stable. Uh, and we found that there are some 
other pieces of equipment that go along with these struts that would make our job a little easier, safer, and more efficient. Uh, some base plates and some additional strap devices. Uh, again, that we're able to purchase with this grant money uh, that didn't impact our operating budget and are going to make deployment of this device or these devices uh, much easier uh, and much more efficient and, and certainly much safer for everybody involved. So it was a, a great purchase as well. Uh, the other item that we're purchasing uh, also kind of related to vehicle extrication. Uh, you may remember probably about six months ago, we purchased some battery powered um, uh, extrication tools. Yeah, everyone has probably heard of the Jaws of Life. So these are tools that are made by the same company uh, using the same principles as the Jaws of Life, only instead of uh, running from a gasoline powered engine, uh, they're, they're run by battery power. Uh, makes them quiet, uh, makes them extremely portable. You're not te tethered to a cord or, or, a, um, or an engine. Uh, and we were able to use these tools that we purchased a number of months ago immediately upon receiving them. Uh, the, the week after we put them on the truck, uh, we were using them to extricate a person from a, an automobile that was pinned in the auto. Uh, we've used them a number of times since then, uh, up, up to and including, uh, I believe it was last week, uh, we had an automobile extrication. And I believe that's also posted on social. You can go back and take a look on our media, social media platforms and check out that extrication. But uh, the point is we're able to purchase yet another one of these tools uh, to add to our cadre of equipment. We have a spreader to, to pull apart doors and pieces of uh, an automobile or other product. Uh, and we have a cutter to, to cut those uh, items as well. Uh, and this next item that we're purchasing with this grant money is called a RAM and it's used to push uh, pieces of an automobile or other piece of machinery apart to create a space where we can effect a rescue. So this is basically the trifecta of tools that are available. We've had the first two and now we'll, we'll get the, the final piece to that, uh, that trifecta of tools. So we'll be fully equipped and uh, the firefighters really uh, appreciate these tools. Uh, they're happy to have received the first two uh, using our operating budget. And I think they'll be happy to receive this, this final tool because it helps us do our job more efficiently, helps us affect rescues more quickly. So that's the, really the name of the game when it comes to extrication, that, that golden hour of getting people uh, into a trauma center. Please share our appreciation to every member of the department. We are very grateful for your work and thank you for being with us tonight. Well, thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed it and I appreciated you having me on. Thank you. That was it for tonight. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.